Good afternoon and welcome. I'm Brent Donaldson, Executive Editor for Modern Machine Shop. Today's webinar brought to you by ProShop ERP will teach you how shop information automation can change the game, including ERP systems, manufacturing execution systems, and quality management systems. While it's easy to see how disorganization can cause missed deliveries and unhappy customers, recognizing the impact this has on the utilization of equipment and people, and understanding which work is truly profitable and which is not, is not nearly as easy to recognize. But with the right kind of information automation, you can harness the daily confusion that is still the norm in many shops. These systems are typically called ERPs, but there are major differences in their ability to serve job shops. Estimating, scheduling, shop floor communications, and even quality control can be combined into a single integrated system. Today, we'll learn not only how to do this, but we'll also learn how this kind of system can be used to scale the growth of your job shop with fewer people. Today's presenters are Paul Van Meter, founder of ProShop ERP, James Marzilli, president of Marzilli Machine, and Matt Lindsay, chief financial officer and owner of Autopilot Incorporated. Please note that you can submit questions for the team at any time during this presentation. Just type your question into the questions box and we'll answer as many as we can at the end. Also note that this webinar is being recorded and you will receive a link to that recording via email. With that, let's get going. I'll turn it over to Paul. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate it. Um, it's nice to be here with all of you. Uh, appreciate you joining and finding interest in this topic. Um, it's near and dear to my heart. I know it is for Matt and James as well. So we we'll look forward to the conversation. Um, please do uh, put your questions in um, into the Q&A, and we will definitely get to those at the end. I want to start with letting these two guys introduce themselves. And while we do that, we're going to run a poll question. Um, so you'll see that pop up. But let's start with you, Matt. Can you just give us a bit of your background and that of what your shop looks like today? Sure. Yeah, appreciate uh, being here. Uh, Matt Lindsay, I'm the owner and CFO of Autopilot. Uh, we're in Bozeman, Montana. We're a precision job shop. AS9100 certified, ITAR registered. Uh, obviously, we make a lot of parts for the aerospace and defense industry, uh, but we also do a lot for the outdoor recreation industry. So think kind of fishing, hunting, hiking, skiing, climbing gear, which is kind of fun because that's, uh, that's what we like to do in, on the weekends here in our backyard. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. How, what size is your shop? Oh, we're, we're about 20 people right now, both okay. turning and, and milling. Turning and milling, right on. And Jamie, how about yourself? Hi, I'm Jamie Marzilli. I own Marzilli Machine Company. Uh, we're out of Fall River, Massachusetts, and we are a 30-man shop. And we specialize in difficult machine components for the firearms, aerospace, uh, defense, and commercial markets. And uh, we've been in business about 10 years. And... Um, you know, we've been a, a pro shop user for quite some time, and we're very excited about this. Awesome. Well, thank you again both for sharing your experience today. I know it's going to be insightful and valuable for those attending. First, let's jump into a little bit of my background, why I even am qualified to talk about any of this. So that picture right there is the machine shop that I started with my business partners right out of college back in 1997, a little 2,000 square foot warehouse. Uh, funded by a second mortgage, Haas VF4 was our first machine, um, and we just had no idea what in the heck we were doing. So we were in the trenches for a lot of years, building the company, growing it, making mistakes, learning from our mistakes, um, trying to build systems to get better and grow. Um, and ultimately, uh, we sold that company um, because we built ProShop while we ran the company. Um, this is kind of what we looked like when we exited the business a few years ago. Uh, so we learned enough from our mistakes to, to do a few things right. Um, and now we've been helping other shops do what we did for the last six years. So I always want to share our mission statement because I think it really defines who we are and what we do. Uh, we deeply, we deliver powerful manufacturing software by deeply understanding our clients' challenges in order to meaningfully improve their businesses and in turn their communities. So we're trying to help shops like, like Jamie's and Matt's to, uh, to grow their employee base, um, do good things in their community, create good jobs. And we think that's just so important um, to the economy. 
So today we're going to talk about uh, a day in the life of many job shops. I'm going to take one sort of hopefully funny anecdote. Uh, might be a little bit painful for some of you, but because you can probably relate to it. We're going to talk about how better systems can impact both the office and the shop. We are going to talk about some actual results from doing that improvement work, and then we'll get into some Q&A. So I, I want to also talk about why does this matter and uh, sort of what Matt, or excuse me, what uh, Brent said at the beginning um, about not being organized can have clear, obvious examples in, you know, scrap rate and chaos and, and not profitability, but they are a barrier to growth. And, and one of the reasons why this is important that I alluded to a minute ago is that, and I'm sure many of you are experiencing this, you know, the, the resurgence of onshoring and reshoring uh, is really accelerating. The demands in our manufacturing economy are greater than they've ever been before. Um, there's huge opportunities. And it's really important and incumbent on each individual shop to improve themselves to a level where they can kind of raise their own bar um, and meet the challenge that, that the industry needs us to meet. Um, so this is sort of the fundamental reason why we believe this is all important. And, uh, and so that underpins what we talk about today. And we're gonna launch a second poll question right now. Um, is your company interested in going paperless? Because that is a crux to a lot of what we're gonna talk about. So here is one anecdote um, of something that is system uh, sort of um, exemplifies a problem. And actually, we are going to launch another poll question right now. Um, but let's talk about this problem. So a customer, a buyer calls you up on their sweet rotary phone because they're pissed off because their quality team just rejected a whole batch of your parts. Okay. So you may have gotten this call before. You're kind of deer in the headlights. You have no idea what they're talking about. You know, I'm so sorry. What's the problem? We'll figure it out. We'll make it right. Turns out your parts are, they failed the cosmetic requirements on the drawing to have no fingerprints or anything like that on the drawing or on the, on the, on the parts. So you can understand how that can be because you have this beautiful job traveler with these big bright orange pieces of paper that say no fingerprints, use gloves. But it turns out that this actually got misplaced when the parts were being made. So people didn't see those pieces of paper. They didn't read the notes. They forgot that you're supposed to use gloves. They touched them with their grubby, oily hands. And that made it through to the finished parts, which are supposed to be highly cosmetic. So, um, <laughs> so you go into firefighting mode. Uh, you got to tear down another job, get some more material, set up to remake the parts because you can't fix them. Um, everyone's pissed. Your employees are pissed. Your customers are pissed. And but this is just the reality of running a job shop, right? This is you're juggling a million things every day, trying to remember the details. People in the shop are doing their best to remember the details. Um, Jamie, Matt, I would love for you to take a moment now to share sort of what 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 your shops used to be like in this regard before you guys, um, what it used to look like before Pro Shop? Can you start yeah, with you, James? Thanks, Paul. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Um, well, the truth is, is we really don't like to think about that. That's how bad it used to be. And the, the issue here is that you don't really know how bad it is until you fix it and you have a chance to think back about how it went. And, um, you know, the, the chaos that would ensue that just kind of gets ironed out when you switch to paperless and you have everything in one place. And you, Matt? I mean, your, your example was just us. I don't know how many times that happened where, you know, phone call <laughs> we weren't expecting and, you know, hey, I'll put you on hold or let me call you back in four hours once I figure out what's going on and trying to find a, a paper traveler that's got, you know, coolant and coffee stains, if you could even find it. Um, you know, and just, you know, just chasing your tail, trying to figure out what's going on. Why, why didn't we know, you know, to do X, Y, Z, the fingerprint thing, you know, it's, it's clearly written right there. Um, so yeah, a lot of, a lot of follow-up phone calls kind of tail between our legs. And, uh, it just felt like we yeah. were scrambling you know, a lot, of, a lot of different sources to get data, Excel spreadsheets all over the place. Yep. That is the reality of most shops. So I'm going to ask for a little engagement with all of you. If you can relate to this, type the word juggle 
into the chat. And I want to see how many people write juggle in there because I'm pretty sure most shops do this every day. So the default solution is to throw bodies at the problem, right? Like, oh, we just need a project manager. We need more people doing this or that or whatever, making paper travelers or making sure it all comes together. But thank you, John. But it is not the answer. The an If you do that, you'll just have a much bigger um, company with the same problems. You know, in our shop, we had that issue when we were not, in fact, when we got larger, we were often in some cases less profitable than we were when we were smaller because we had all these mouths to feed, but we still had all these problems we we're trying to solve. Yeah, now they're streaming in there. <laughs> juggle, 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 juggle times three. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. So a lot of people can relate to this. Um, so, but the answer is you got to solve the underlying root problems of these, not just throw bodies at the problem. So, because when you are disorganized, when you have chaos happening and you're juggling, no one is happy. Customers aren't happy. You're not happy. Your employees aren't happy. It's just um, a bad situation. So it stymies growth, as we talked about. <coughs> it makes you not as profitable. It's just all sorts of issues. So let's talk about some actual solutions here. Um, what we really are attempting to do is we're going to do more with less effort, less people, less resources. Uh, in, in, in order to maximize uh, our ability to grow and have profit and be strong, stable, growing companies. Um, and we're going to talk about two main areas today. We're going to talk about it doing it in the office, and then we're going to talk about doing it in the shop. So we'll start with the office here. Um, I brought up this picture. I found this slide this morning. Um, what we're trying to do, and this, I'll talk about this in a second, we're trying to get your office working like a fine-tuned machine, a team that knows exactly what they're supposed to do, when they're supposed to do it, uh, automating certain processes. Obviously, this is a Formula One team, and there's a ton of people right here on this picture. But you, fortunately, don't have to process your jobs in two seconds. That's what they're doing right here. They are changing over their Formula One team on a pit stop in two seconds. And it's a lot of bodies, but they everyone knows exactly what they're supposed to be doing. It's razor fine-tuned down to perfection. Um, and that's really, I think, a, a story for what we're looking for in a, in a company where we're not running around trying to find information or look for things or things of that nature. Everyone knows what they're supposed to be doing. When you can eliminate paper and bring your processes into a more systematic system where everything's connected and linked and viewable and it's very process-focused, you can parallel process, you can, um, it frees up just a whole bunch of different things that you may not have even conceived of before. COVID was a great example. Um, and it was actually, COVID was actually pretty good for our company. We've, we've grown immensely in that period of time. And I think it's because a lot of shops realize they can't keep doing things the old way. They can't think, keep doing things on paper. You know, th think back to, you know, March of 2020, um, there's lockdowns happening. There's all sorts of craziness happening. Employees are staying home. Um, for our customers using ProShop or in any company that is not using paper-based systems, using more browser-based or computerized systems, it's okay for a lot of employees to work from home, right? Your estimators could work from home. Your customer service people can work from home. Your purchasing agents can work from home. So there's a lot of parallel process things that can happen. You know, a job comes in, all of a sudden everyone knows that, and they all start working on their respective parts of it. As opposed to you, someone prints off a job traveler packet, you know, from order entry, and it physically moves around from desk to desk. And people then are triggered by that thing showing up on their desk that they have something to do now. That just doesn't work in a remote environment. Um, and it's also a lot slower, even when everyone is there together. So. Um, I'm just going to share a few quotes from some ex from other customers, and then we're going to really dig in with, with Matt and Jamie on, on how they have improved their office workflows uh, to do more with less. So starting here with this one, Dave from GNS, um, more than doubled sales and quadrupled profit without any additional employees. Bam, he says. Um, from Cody at Coastal, QA manager freed up 50% of his time, allowing us to pursue AS9100. 
Um, Rich from Celthero freed up two overhead, excuse, two expediter positions and one planner within the first few months. Now they're our oldest customer. They've been on ProShop for I think 12 plus years. And um, they said they would need more than 10 additional office staff today without using ProShop. And Chris at East Branch, um, small shop, 12 person shop, um, running on a, an older uh, legacy ERP system, um, realized they didn't need a full-time purchasing agent anymore. They could eliminate the position and still get everything to show up even faster than it did before to cut their lead times and uh, improve profitability. So um, I'm sure some of those things are relatable to you guys. Um, so let's, uh, let's dig in. Matt, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, how things have changed in your office? And I really want to dig into the how, like what actually made the difference to allow you to, to grow like you have um, without adding a, throat, a bunch more bodies at it. Sure. Yeah. So we, we joined up with ProShop about two, two and a half years ago. Uh, and since then, we've effectively doubled in size, revenue and employees. You know, every shop's different, but for us, uh, it wasn't necessarily the elimination of office staff that we had. It was just kind of teeing us up for growth. It, you know, you made the comment, um, throwing bodies at the, at the problem is not a solution. And, and we knew that. Um, you know, we knew we had to change systems, not just throw a couple extra people to, to just, you know, get in the, the fire drill of, of running around. So uh, quick implementation. And again, it, you know, that allowed us to just with the office staff that we had, uh, I'm talking purchasing, quoting, estimating, customer service, uh, sales, marketing, et cetera. We were able to, you know, spend our time doing what, you know, what we're best at, you know, bringing in sales, meeting with customers, um, talking about long-term relationships instead of, you know, it used to take us on, on any given job an hour at least just to print off the, the paper travelers, get the print on there, you know, yeah, slide in that little orange thing that says, hey, no fingerprints, you know, don't do that, and then distribute it through the shop. Um, super quick and easy process now. So again, what used to take us an hour per job might be five minutes, 10 minutes, um, you know, if the customer's already in our, our database and our system. So, you know, that empowered our shop floor personnel to, to really be a lot quicker. You know, as machine shop owners, we always talk about downtime and how to avoid that, you know, setup kills everybody. And how can we increase efficiency while we're actually in the manufacturing process? But it's kind of the same thing. We looked at it the same way. The quicker we could get from, you know, purchase order, um, you know, to, to work order created, the quicker we can get that job started, queue up material, tools, et cetera. You know, we kind of looked at that the same way as, as the actual setup of a job. You know, the quicker we can get to that, that promised land, the quicker this job is going to get processed within our company. So, Again, you know, went from uh, three office staff, and we we still have basically three office staff, but the uh, the shop floor personnel um, have have basically doubled in that time. Awesome, yeah, and we'll get to a slide where we actually dig into that and show people what your company looked like before and and now. So, Jamie, how about yourself? How is how has your office changed? Um, well, my what my office does on a day to day basis has changed. Um, since we implemented ProShop, everything about this business has changed probably two or three times because as we get better with the software and we begin to understand the tool bag a little bit better, we start reaching in a little deeper and, we, and then we start over from the beginning again and, and streamline our processes. You know, we've been using the software for about two and a half years now. And before we made the switch, we, you know, not to be redundant to what Matt was saying, but. A lot of people fall into this trap. It's, you know, how do I scale? How do I solve these problems? And, you know, I know in my experience, it became an issue of, well, we must not have enough people. Well, maybe we don't have enough machines. We started getting into this cycle until we realized it's really more a three-legged stool and that the systems were probably the most important part. And so now we are constantly reevaluating our systems, even taking what we thought we knew when we started ProShop and reevaluating that and going back through all of our processes to streamline them again, now that we understand the system so much better and, and what its best practices are. And so our office staff has, it shrank. Uh, there was probably you know seven people in there. Um, we cut that down to three or four. 
And then the company doubled in size and we were able to maintain that three or four people in the office running this company. And we're about 30 people working here. Mm -hmm. Awesome. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to ask some, some engagement again on the chat. If you have been in a similar situation and can relate to what these guys just said, please put relate in the chat. And I want to see uh, how many of you uh, can relate to that. I imagine it's, it's, it's a lot. Awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, obviously this is a ProShop webinar. We'd love to engage with anyone uh, about ProShop, but the principles here are really also something you can hopefully can take away and start implementing things tomorrow in your own business using your current tools. And that is to just, you know, really focus on, um, on your upfront planning processes being more um, more focused. Yeah, there's the relates. Thank you, everybody. Um, uh, more focused on, on systems and processes rather than, you know, just sort of winging it. Um, I know I get the feedback sometimes. I just don't have time to put more effort in up front. All right. We're just going balls to the wall, excuse my language. Um, and it's just nuts. You know, I don't have extra time. I just can't do that. And the reality is you can't afford not to do that because you will get a 10 times, 20 times return on your time investment up front uh, on the back end, right? All the fires you're fighting today, right? The job you have to remake because you got fingerprints on it. That's because you weren't thorough enough up front. And so, and it's sort of a catch 22, but um, it's just, I want to just reinforce that, that point. It's so important to spend the time to do it right the first time so you don't have to redo it later. Um, all right, now let's dig into the actual shop a bit more. Um, we are flying through our slides here. Um, <clears throat> and what we often see, uh, and this is a beautiful picture of uh, Roush Yates, just sort of, this is a very idealistic picture of what a shop might look like uh, when you have the time and uh, an effort to be able to do that. Um, but uh, what we often hear from clients, we do lots of videos, lots of testimonials, lots of interviews, and uh, there's, there's dozens on our website, um, is we often see that people will actually get 25% more throughput before they even have to add machines and add people. Um, and uh, so sometimes they can, you know, sort of uh, let some, let some uh, uh, folks maybe that are not really working out perfectly or they're closer to retirement or whatever, just kind of let that naturally happen and still be able to, to maintain and keep their throughput um, and growing even. So, and this breaks down into a couple of different things. Um, there are, um, when we talk about, you know, getting throughput on a machine, there's kind of two main categories. They're the setup of the machine and then there's the actual production and running of your machines. And of course, there's the time when your machines aren't doing either of those things, which is probably even the biggest issue. Um, but I kind of lump that in some ways into setup. So when you are able to provide all the information that people want and need to do their jobs, to set up their jobs, right to them at point of use, you know, on a screen without having to chase down a traveler, um, or go ask somebody because there isn't any information in any kind of system about how you do this or that other person's out on vacation or they're sick or they retired. Um, just talked to a shop this morning. Their shop manager retired or moved, left the company, and they're just desperately dealing with tribal knowledge, right? It's just a huge, huge problem. They, they, so, almost everyone in the shop doesn't know what they, what they need to know because it all left with that guy in his head when he left. So, um, so uh providing everything to a person uh setting up a machine when they when they start is immensely important our goal would be to have them be able to walk up to a machine with a kitted job ready to go and get their first part off in the allotted setup time without ever having to leave that machine i know it's kind of an idealized state uh, one of the handouts that we actually have in the handout section is a setup reduction um sort of pdf handout um, talking about how many clients cut their setup times by 50% just by following some of these principles. 
Um, so su super important there. And then once you kind of move over into production, you ideally want to have people with sort of as minimum amount of skill as is necessary to hit the target rate, making good parts um, hour after hour. Um, and there's a lot to unpack in there. But, um, you know, again, the ability to have their work instructions, to know their cycle times, to be able to do their quality inspections so they're not making scrap parts. We know the process is stable and you're making good parts. That's all just really, really important. Um, and when you do those things, uh, it's amazing how much more throughput you can get. Your spindles can turn more often, making good parts, less setup time, uh, less downtime. You know, the classic example is you go to set up a job. Mid setup, you realize you don't have a special tap or a special thread gauge. And all of a sudden you got to scramble to go find one, go buy one, pause the job, overnight it for the next early AM delivery on UPS, or pull the job and set up a different job, right? It's all immensely wasteful. Um, imagine the picture I showed with the Formula One team. Imagine the driver comes into the pits and someone realizes they don't have the wrench they need to tighten the wheel. It's not going to go well. So kind of same example here in our shop. So I'd love to, um, uh, we'll dig into... Uh, Jamie and Matt's specific uh, experience with this. But one of the other things that I do want to share, um, which actually came from a customer of ours, a very wise guy named Ken, um, is one of the most important things that a shop can do is to increase their rate of learning. When you do that, just like compound interest, if you, you know, increase your rate of learning 25% and you compound that year over year, the amount of improvement you can make in your company is vastly different than if your rate of learning is lower. And that is one of the key things I think that, uh, that, that companies built on better systems and processes uh, can really take advantage of. So let's get into some specifics, talk about the shop. Jamie, this is, these are the numbers that you shared with us, mm -hmm. um, pro shop and after, um, and, uh, yeah, let's dig into kind of what it looks like on your shop floor what it used to look like and what it looks like today and some of the improvements you've made. Sure. Um, so, you know, we used to be about a 15 man shop and 30% of our employees were basically just keeping the shop going, uh, paper travelers, keeping track of things. They were trying to find travelers. I can't, we actually measured uh, as part of our decision-making criteria for jumping over to pro shop. We measured how much time we spent in one week looking for travelers and uh, calculated that out over the course of the year and figured out Pro Shop would have paid for itself many times. So it was worth giving it a go. Um, and then as we've grown, like I uh, said in the last segment, we, we actually were able to cut that down to about three people running the shop when we were about 18 people in size. And then uh, very much like what Matt said, our, our, our shop has doubled in size, doubled in personnel, doubled in gross revenue. Um, Profit margins are as good as they've ever been. And this year looks like we're going to break our record substantially. And we've managed to do that and grow from, I think we were at 20 people roughly to 30 people. And we've only needed to add one more person to the you know non-production staff in order to continue to juggle all of that. And everything is running so much smoother now, purchasing, inventory management, quality control. Everything is there where you expect it to be. Um, you know, no one catches me in my heels anymore. If a customer calls and they want to know what's going on, I can see it right in front of me. I know exactly where a job is and what its status is. And so I don't need people fielding those calls. I don't need account managers. I can answer the call and just help them out right away because the data I need is right in front of me. And so just all in all, the shop is, it's never been as good as it is now. I, I love running my company today in a way that I never previously have been able to. Can you speak a little bit to some of those things I mentioned about just setup time, um, what 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 you saw, or you know, or production running, if that's improved, and just you know, spindle time, kind of in general? Sure. Um, so the term here that we like to throw around was a term that you actually taught me uh, when we first started. Was the goal of that portion of the job is to remove the uncertainty. So we, you know, it's a tribal knowledge problem, and a lot of people say. Well, we want to eliminate the tribal knowledge problem, but that's 
you're in a tribe. You can't get rid of tribal knowledge. So the goal has to be to share the tribal knowledge in an instantaneous way. Um, and that's what we do. So the people who know how jobs should get made, we we dump a ton of manpower and resources. And in fact, we hired a full-time guy now just to do planning and programming because that's how important it is that it needs to be done right. We documented exactly how we want it done. So it's getting it done the same way every single time. And so the first time that a job that we put it together and we walk through it and first article it, you know, let's say that takes six hours. Now, the next time that we go to run that job, we have the verified G codes punched out of the machine. We know exactly what tool we used when we stuck it in there. And not just saying, well, use a half inch end mill. We're saying use this specific half inch end mill. This is the one, uh, every tool in my shop has its own uh, local tool number. And so that's what we're calling out. Pictures of the last time that we put it together. Sometimes we even have little videos showing the load. The, we can save so much information, the torque wrench settings that we used when we, when we set it up the first time. So you remove all of this uncertainty from the process. And our goal is at least a 50% setup reduction. You know, how long does it actually take you to bolt a set of soft jaws in, punch a program back out into a machine? All my machines have spindle probes. So sometimes we'll see even better than a 50% reduction. Uh, especially the third or fourth time a job goes through the system and we start filling in more and more and more of the little details that really can make a difference as to how it goes. And so, yeah, that's our, that's 50% reduction is, is an easy thing to achieve. We actually like to try to push that a little further if possible. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and Matt, how about yourself? Uh, let me switch to the next slide here. Yeah, you know, a lot of the same things Jamie was mentioning. Um, you know, I think he he hit a key point, just the accessibility and the the availability of data. So, you know, every shop's different. Every every shop, I think, has a different setup. We went ahead and for each of our CNC machines, each each one of our work cells, you know, we've got um, stations there. You know, you've got your computer, you've got a couple monitors. Um, kind of to your point, where when you walk up and you're ready to do a setup. Tools, materials, you know, work holding is one thing, but if you don't have instructions, you know, you might have all of that sitting there on the bench, but if you don't know what to do with it and you have to go back upstairs and look for something, you know, that's a killer too. So having, um, you know, computer set up with monitors, you can pull up, you know, the print, you can pull up work instructions. That's kind of our goal. You can, you can do that at any machine. We do anything from kind of the you know, quick term prototype, um, you know, all the way up through the production stuff. And so I'm thinking the, the stuff, you know, the hot jobs where, you know, the setup is, you know, 10 to one more important than the cycle time. Cause we're just, you know, we're making two parts and the cycle time is kind of a drop in the bucket, you know, having all that stuff kind of what, what Jamie was highlighting, just, you know, all that information right there. Um, I agree. I mean, tribal knowledge isn't a bad thing. We just need to be able to, to capture it. Um, you know, we've all had those guys, you know, when when Mike or Joe or whoever is on vacation and it's time to do that job and he's done that job for 10 years and, and no one knows how to do it. You know, that's that's kind of a killer. So um, and then on the, you know, just kind of the, the production side of things, I kind of use me as the litmus test within our company. I'm not a machinist by trade. I'm not an engineer. Um, you know, so I like to take that that approach, you know, go out on the shop floor pull up, you know, a job we're working at, uh, working on, see if I can look at the work instructions. I mean, if I can understand it and, and, you know, load and unload parts and run parts, you know, that's, that's kind of what we want is that, that whole ability, not that we do this, but, but the ability to take somebody just off the street with no experience, you know, put them up there and say, Hey, here you go. Here's everything you need to know. We're here for support, but, um, we found that just having all that information, not not necessarily leaving people out on an island with, with no help to do their job, but you know, storing all that information, tool list and fixtures, jaws, et cetera, in Pro Shop. I mean, that's that's ninety percent of it. It's just capturing the data. So it's been awesome for us. Um, you know, especially a lot of the the younger people that we're interviewing and hiring coming in, maybe first job out of college or trade school. You know, they're they kind of expect that from my humble perspective and opinion, you know, they're, they're usually pretty tech savvy. They're used to having things, you know, whatever app you're on, it's just right there on your fingertips. They're used to having data right away. Um, so we've kind of used it a little bit more as a, as a hiring and recruiting tool. I show it to, 
you know, to new hires coming in, you know, as we're doing a, a tour of the facility and, you know, I just stop at, at the first workstation, you know, not knowing what job is on there, but we'll just kind of look at what's going on in pro shop. And it, it's kind of cool to see, you know, to see their reaction to it. Yeah. I think oh, you thanks. even, yeah, go Can ahead. Follow up to what Matt was saying. Um, sure. You know, for, for the people that are listening to this, you know, mathematically, if you're trying to make sense of this, what moving this type of time frame from we, in my shop, we call it moving it from online to offline. And so normally online would be like as soon as you assign the job to somebody and they begin working on it. But now and that's t directly tied to your spindles moving. But now we've gone ahead and done all the programming, the planning in my shop. We even kit the tools ahead of time. And so all of this stuff is done offline, allowing you to really maximize your online time and your, your spindles moving. And, you know, and Matt, and Matt says that he, he doesn't, um, you know, he wouldn't hire people right up the street or I don't mean to, to mince words like that, Matt. Um, but we, in my shop, we actually do. So we'll, we'll take something that somebody has created, like a standard operating procedure or a part level in our shop, and we will give it to the weakest among us and see if they can make sense of it. Because your shop can only be as strong as its weakest link, right? So we'll grab the newest guy in the shop and we'll show him it and say, can you make heads or tails of this? And if not, we'll we'll change it. We'll tighten it up. I think, uh, Jamie, you even said, you told me once you like hired some kids that were doing like lawn maintenance for you or something. I'll and... hire anybody from anywhere. Because I, I have that kind of, I'm not having the same kind of hiring issues that a lot of my, um, my friends out there in, in this industry are having. A lot of that's because we're more interested in hiring people for their character. Are they going to be a good fit? Are they going to fit in with my company? We could teach manufacturing to anybody because our systems are good enough. And we'll give those guys the opportunity to learn on the job because everything they need is, is right there in front of them. I mean, if they can build a Lego set, we can teach them how to put a machine back together. And our quality control systems are strong enough and our procedures are strong enough that there are check gates everywhere going forward to make sure that no bad products get by. And th that gives new people opportunities to go through our training systems and to learn what they need to do. And, uh, you know, we can't just sit around waiting for perfect employees to show up. We have to start making them ourselves. Yeah, we're, yeah. Jager, we're kind of exactly the same. I mean, I, you know, I mentioned we, we don't do that, but I mean, we've taken, it used to be, oh, you know, you got to have X years of experience, you know, um, and we don't, we don't put that on job postings anymore. Same, same exact thing. I mean, if you're just, if you're loyal and you show up on time and you're mechanically inclined and willing to listen, we'll take care of the rest. You know, a lot of that is, is facilitated through the systems that we've got, but uh, yeah, it's kind of, it helps us just hire and be more nimble. I appreciate those examples. And it actually reminds me of something I'll, I'll share here. Um, so maybe three years ago now I was at a customer. <clears throat> it was, we were shooting a video that day. And we were kind of all wrapped up. It was in the evening. It was like maybe six o'clock in the evening. And they were, they had a second shift, a very, very small, like two guys on their second shift. And I was talking to this, this kid, he was a kid. He was probably early twenties. Um, and he was setting up one of their five axis mills. And I said, you know, I said, making some assumptions. Um, I said, what shop, you know, did, how long have you been here? He said, oh, I've been here about six months. And I said, well, what shop did you come from? Cause I know many of the shops in that town. And he said, oh, I didn't come from a shop. I, well, actually what he said was I came from KFC and I said, KFC, I don't know that shop. And he's like, no, Kentucky fried chicken. And I said, wait a second. I said, is this your first machining job? Yes. That you started six months ago. Yes. And you're on night shift setting up a five axis mill. Yes. How in the world is that possible? What do you, how do you know how to do this? And he pulled up his pro shop screen and he said, everything I need to know to set this machine up is right here in pictures and videos. The guys on the day shift that know actually how to do all that stuff, they just lay it out for me. And, uh, he, he was mechanically inclined, like you said, Matt, you know, Matt, but, um, but besides that, he was just a good, diligent worker that showed up and could follow instructions. And so I just thought it was a remarkable example, probably the best I've ever seen of taking someone with zero experience and very quickly having them be fully productive, setting up a five axis machine, you know, on a night shift without the day shift people around to support him. So, yeah, those are the kinds of things I think that are 
actually genuinely possible um, when you, and, and again, you don't need to use ProShop for this. You could do this yourself with just really good, awesome Google Sheets, right? But um, but there's lots of tools that we think, you know, make ProShop even better. But take the concepts of capturing, as Nick said in the chat, you know, don't remove the tribal knowledge, capture it, document it, and share it. Um, and that is a key, key point to getting more throughput on your shop floor. Any other points you guys want to make to kind of wrap this part up? No, I'm good. No. All right. So it's one thing to increase efficiency and reduce waste and get rid of processes you don't need to do and stop those fires from starting in the first place. But without actually having sales pressure, positive sales pressure on the front end, you can't actually grow because you need you need more customers to, to buy the spindle time that you have to sell. Um, and so I want to talk a little bit about growing your sales and growing that sort of positive pressure of more RFQs, more customer demand than you can actually meet today, um, which will result in ultimately buying more machines, hiring more people, and this virtuous cycle of upward growth in our in your shop and in the economy. So um, I know both of you have some anecdotes uh, about uh, how you get sales, how you impress your customers, how you win their confidence to work with you. Um, so Matt, if we could start with you kind of talking about how you've done some of that. Yeah, well, it, it kind of goes back to, to how we kick things off. I mean, having everything here and not, not doing the paper system anymore. It's just freed me and my partner up to, to go out and just go on the sales warpath. Exactly what you said. I mean, that's how you grow. And that's, that's where we think uh, a lot of our time is best spent. Um, so, you know, we use, we use ProShop candidly as a sales tool. Uh, you know, if we've got a, a customer locally or in town, um, you know, obviously you do the dog and pony show at the tour and you kind of show off the facility and sit down and talk about capabilities. But we have started uh, really kind of kicking those tours off just with a almost kind of a demo, if you will, of, of ProShop and how it works. Um, you know, we've got the ability to, to build up kind of a, a sample, you know, we're not obviously sharing uh, sensitive customer data, but we can kind of mock up, you know, a hypothetical what it would look like. Um, and just having everything from the, you know, the uh, in-process checks and, and quality data that we need in there, um, you know, click of a button showing how to create a, an NCR, um, you know, all of the quality metrics, uh, you know, just locked in there, you know, material certs attached right there, um, you know, so between not just customers, but and when we went through our uh, AS9100 audit, same thing, the auditor was just kind of like, what is this? You know, he was kind of blown away. Um, so yeah, it kind of, it's a, it's a great sales tool we found, you know, we don't spend a, a ton of time on it, but I think just, you know, just showing somebody a, a quick overview, I think kind of sets the stage, um, you know, kind of provides a little bit of professionalism, shows that, you know, we've got some things, it, organization is not, um, is not an issue. Uh, so it kind of eliminates that, you know, that that uh, potential issue. And then, you know, the tour ensues and, and um, again, walking out there and showing monitors and pro shop uh, out on the shop floor to kind of real real time data. Uh, it's been really good for us. And I think you even mentioned that you used to like sort of take whatever work came your way. And now you're being much more strategic and deciding who you want to work with. Is that Oh, totally. <laughs> you know, back in the back in you know the old version of autopilot, if I will. Yeah, it was as I imagined. A majority of, of machine shops are. You know, we we just couldn't say no. You know, somebody's knocking on the door. You know, the phone call. They need something done. Well, that's that's revenue. You know, you got to say yes, and you got to figure out a way to do it. So we've kind of taken a step back now. It's allowed us to to really kind of pinpoint, figure out who we are. Uh, what are our capabilities? You know, we don't we don't pretend to be able to do something if we can't do it. So, um, you know, looking at looking at the real time schedule and hey, can we? Yeah, we might have the capabilities, but do we have the time to do it? Um, you know, we've just been able to to say no to to jobs and customers that really don't fit what we're trying to do, um, and it's really let us kind of focus on the industries and the customers that we have found are you know they're profitable for us. We're comfortable with. The types of parts and materials that they're doing and we're really kind of focusing on that i mean we don't get me wrong we like to be pushed out of our comfort zone we like really complicated tricky complex parts but, 
um, you know, we just, we need to know what we're getting into. And it's, it's definitely, you know, the ability to say no is a, a refreshing thing. Yeah, that, that is, there's so much, so much there. It's, it's, uh, and I, I can't remember, we've done videos or blog posts about the importance of deciding your good fit customers um, and making sure that's who you're working with. Because I'm sure as every shop knows, when you take on a customer or take on a job that's not within your core competency, it is a, it can be a bloodbath, right? And those kind of jobs just are a massive drain on profitability. Um, I think you, your, your turn to kill the losers, um, kill the not losers. to interrupt, but, you know, we're actually going through that exercise kind of right now, the, the ability to, you know, you, you get a job, you do it, and then that's great. But, you know, I think for a lot of us, it's also, you know, hey, did we actually make money on this or did we lose money? How did we do? You know, so kind of that, you know, end of job analysis is something we're really focusing on now, um, just the ability to, to track our time between setup and you know, run parts and tear down an inspection to really kind of see, you know, and we're constantly surprised, you know, jobs that we think are, are great jobs, you know, maybe aren't super great and jobs that we kind of roll our eyes at, you know, are actually kind of profitable. So having that exercise, uh, going through that exercise and having that data is uh, super important for us. Yeah. Yeah. And on our website, in our blog area, there is a, there's a, there's a, uh, a blog post on, our kill the losers process that we coined at, at uh, pro CNC. Um, awesome. So Jamie, how about yourself? And while you talk, I'm going to bring up um, a slide because I, I was so impressed by this story that you told me and I just, I, I've loved it ever since you shared it with me. So, um, so we use pro shop Selling with ProShop is about bragging about the improvements of your company to people who speak your language. And so, you know, we'll, they can tell out there that, you know, like you're selling most of the time, you're selling to people who know what they're buying, right? These are purchasers who buy millions and millions of dollars worth of parts from hundreds of different vendors, and they can start to tell, you know, statistically which ones are, you know, how, how do they get the cream to rise to the top and understand which ones they should sell to. And, you know, showing buyers what we were doing with, um, with pro shop, you know, a lot of them have a lot of planning experience. And so they, they understood what I was saying to them and realized that if we were planning at this level of detail, then just statistically speaking, we were much more likely to be able to deliver our parts, you know, in spec and on time because of the amount of effort that we were putting into it. And so this is a picture that you made from a story I told you one time when I was inside of a, a major firearms manufacturer. And I had gotten invited there because we were telling them we had capacity and we wanted to make some parts for them. And in the conference room, the meeting I had was with the head of purchasing and their lead planner. And their lead planner was in the meeting because he was responsible for saying where overflow was and that needed to be subbed out. And so while I was you know, pitching this to these two guys and telling them about it, they were really interested to hear how quickly and nimbly we were able to plan and, and prepare and make sure we had everything we needed and that everything was going to run on time. And I, I started showing them on my cell phone because I have remote access to it through my phone. And I said, well, if you share your Wi-Fi password with me for the TV in the conference room, I can just cast it to the TV for you. And so they did. And so I just threw up a, we keep a, a work order here that we use just for demoing to customers. And I just pulled that work order up. I didn't have any proprietary information on it, but it showed them how we schedule with Pro Shop, we estimate with Pro Shop, we, you know, how we keep track of their part level, how we have archived history as we, I showed them everything. I, I just started going through it and they were completely blown away. And uh, we've made a considerable number of parts for that company since then. And I don't normally have to throw it up on a TV. I've gotten better at selling it to people and explaining it to them. But, you know, it was a real, you know, that was my meeting from that point forward. Even though I had been invited to that customer, I controlled that meeting and the cadence of that meeting until, until I had landed that customer. That's how shocked they were and blown away by how well ProShop helped us to run our company. And, and they were connecting the dots. You could see it happening that if they sent us parts, we were really going to be able to step up and help them with their overflow problems. And, you know, and they started talking amongst themselves about how they were going to get back on schedule. And, you know, that was one of the nicest meetings I had ever been a part of. 
That is, I, I, every time you tell, it, tell that story, I just love it so much. It's just such an incredible like ninja move to whip out your phone, cast their TV. If you agree, let's show Jamie some love. Put ninja in the chat, please, because that is just next level. Um, all right, awesome. Um, and I think we're going to launch another poll question here. So my notes tell me, um, are you satisfied with your current shop management system? Whether that's off the shelf or custom made by you or a bunch of spreadsheets or whatever. Um, all right, let's talk about, oh, I'm sorry, that is a little bit off the screen. It's supposed to be, say, engaging employees. <laughs> my bad, I'm making that slide. Um, so we've already kind of talked about this a little bit. Um, so we will we'll keep it fairly quick here, but um, uh, it's just so important to, when you're making big changes in your company, like adopting a new system, and actually there is a Q and A here, so we'll talk about this, um, uh, is it's important to engage your employees in that decision-making, in the change that's coming, um, making sure they feel included in that, uh, because if you don't, you're gonna have some heels dug in and it's gonna be much more difficult. So that is one point to take away. The other is kind of as um, as uh, Matt kind of alluded to, um, using your system to sell to employees, just like Jamie was talking about selling to customers. You you got to, you know, we all know how difficult it is to find employees these days. So you really need to kind of take to the next level to sell your company to them. Um, why, cho why choose you instead of the shop down the street? Um, and I think, as as Matt alluded to, you know, employees, especially younger ones these days coming into the industry, they don't want to deal with greasy, you know, coffee stained paper documents. They want things on an app, on a screen, very visible, uh, sort of high tech. Um, and so that's that's a key takeaway, I think, as well. And um, we actually have a video on our in our I realize we have a video um, about um, recruiting um, using ProShop. Um, so lots of clients have leaned into this idea and, um, and, and employees respond, you know, they, they don't, they, they'd, they'd rather go work in a system that isn't on fire every day where everything is working smoothly. There's not a lot of chaos and stress and they can enjoy their jobs and just focus on doing a good job, which most employees care, care about. So, um, so I really do think it'll help you kind of, uh, recruit a better class of employee, if, if you will. Um, and, uh, it just makes everything so much easier. So we are wrapping up here, getting close to the Q&A. Um, before we do that, I, uh, for some of you that may not know, I launched a podcast. It's not actually a Pro Shop branded podcast. It's called Machine Shop Mastery. Uh, Jamie was actually one of my most recent interviews on it. Um, but uh, go check that out anywhere you listen to podcasts, uh, Machine Shop Mastery. I'd love for you to, to listen and learn from the wisdom of, of, of my guests. So. Let's get into Q&A. I think, Brett, you're going to help curate this for us. Yes, sir. Thank you to all three of you, and thank you to our live audience. I'm just going to remind you that now, right now, is the time to ask any questions that you might have for this team. Just type them into the Q&A, and we will do our best to get to them. In the meantime, we have a couple of questions lined up. Let's start with this. Matt and James. How long did it take your teams to reach the point where everyone felt comfortable using ProShop? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in um, pretty quickly. Honestly, we we went through kind of the onboarding implementation process, which involved three of us kind of on the upper management team, just testing it out before we rolled it out and went live. And it took about four months. Um, it felt like a good clip to us. Uh, we had a great, you know, implementation specialist, and so we really kind of, you know, learned the system and became basically the the professors, if you will, within our company. And and uh, and once we went live, uh, it was right around January first of 2020. Uh, went live with ProShop. Uh, employees were excited, and they they grabbed on really quick. I mean, for the first month, I think we had backups, you know, just using our paper travelers like we were used to. But after that first month. I mean, I think we were just, you know, just set sail and never look back. Um, we were a little surprised, you know, I think kind of the, the longer tenured employees that, you know, you get people that are kind of stuck in their ways and don't like change. We were kind of anticipating the pushback, huge culture change, brand new system. This isn't something we took lightly. 
And, you know, we kind of found um, the more seasoned guys were the ones like, yep, took you, took you long enough about time, you know? Um, and so everybody, you know, everybody had their own learning curve, but uh, everybody accepted it pretty quick. Um, a little right around the same time frame. Um, but the, the thing that I'd like to point out about this is the amount of time it'll take for your company to acclimate is going to directly be affected by the people that you choose to become your pro shop champion. And so the people who take the training and take this onto their shoulders to spread this knowledge throughout the shop, their attitude towards this change is what's going to determine how it's going to go. Um, in my shop, in our implementation, it was a little bit different. I didn't, I don't have, at that time, I didn't have anyone. Uh, there were no old dogs in my company. I was the oldest person working here uh, and I was in my late thirties. And so I took a different approach. Um, I basically just told everybody this is how it's going to happen and that I, you've been working here, you know, for eight or nine years, we've all been together and I've never, you know, steered us in the wrong direction. You just have to trust me. And that I didn't want everyone questioning it because there were so many moving pieces that it was going to be very difficult for them to understand. And so I just asked my crew to take a leap of faith and to trust me. And then once I had it implemented and started building the systems, I started training everyone. And then at that point, I opened it up to people for a review because there were people asking me things like, well, you know, we have to walk across the shop now to kit our tools up. This is all different now because all the tools got gathered and put into a tool crib. But what they didn't understand was that the tools were getting kitted and delivered to them at their machine. And so there was all kinds of stuff like that that I just didn't want to have to deal with. And so I just asked them, you know, just, just trust me on this. And when it's done, we'll all get together and we'll talk about it. All right. Very good. Uh, let us move on to Aaron's question. And this is uh, more for Paul, I think. Uh, you were talking a lot in this presentation about production. Uh, Aaron's shop is a onesie twosie shop. Can you speak to Pro Shop's uh, application for a onesie twosie shop? Yeah. And I think even, Matt, you alluded to that yourself. You do a lot of one offs. And in our company, in our in Pro CNC, we had about a third of our company was prototype and about two thirds was production. And they both use ProShop exclusively. They used it a little bit differently, but um, there is, uh, it's even, you know, probably the, the whole concept of reducing setup times is even more important in prototype jobs where, you know, that's all you got, right? You have several hours of setup potentially depending on the complexity, you know, and a, a few minutes or an hour or so of, of runtime. So you really need to, optimize your processes um, to reduce that setup time, reduce that uncertainty, you know, make sure everyone has the tools they need uh, right there at the time. Um, and so, yeah, it's totally applicable. And we have many customers um, that are exclusively prototype, you know, one-off shops. So definitely, definitely relevant. Very good. Uh, Dan is asking, how do you categorize an office employee versus a shop? Does an office employee mean engineer purchasing HR supervisor while a shop means operator setting up the machine, measuring and checking? I mean, I think about it more if people are touching product physically, um, making it, checking it, um, you know, packaging it, um, that, that I think of as sort of shop floor folks and people that don't touch product. Um, are more in the office. So um, do you guys think about that the same way? A different way, but we would come out with the exact same result. Um, yeah. that, you know, if they, if they have anything to do with producing the product, their, their production, we even count quality control as product product. If you, if you took that person out of that position, would the product continue to move or would it stop? And so if it, if the answer to that is it would stop, then that person is part of production. Um, Everything. So office staff, people who process paperwork, they're non-producing employees, but shipping, um, quality control, engineering is probably in the middle. It depends on, I guess, what your engineers do for you. But if your engineer does your production and planning and programming, then he's part of production too. Right. Yep. Great question. And I think the only other thing I see here, KFC, kid finding clarity with ProShop. Thank you, Steve, for that. That's hilarious. Um, just sort of wrap things up here. If you're coming to IMTS, please come say hello. We are up in the main CAD CAM ERP hall right there with the red circle. Um, 
And uh, if you want to reach out to either of my guests, uh, thank you both so much today for all your time and wisdom. I really, really genuinely appreciate you sharing. Um, okay. There's their websites, there's their emails and phone numbers. Um, and uh, I think with that, um, just say thank you. Uh, this is, uh, we've had a lot of clients say thank you in the, in, in the ways they give back and feedback and reviews to us. So we're, we're, we're blessed and fortunate to work with so many great shops and, um, and be recognized for doing a good job, hopefully. So thank you all for your time today. Really appreciate everything. And uh, we look forward to talking with you if you're interested in talking with us. And thank you guys again so much for your time today. This, is, this has been super fun. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate it. Thank All right. Guys. That concludes today's presentation. I do want to thank again, Paul, Matt, and James, as well as ProShop ERP for making this web webinar possible. And thanks to everyone for listening in. You should receive an email with a link to the recording soon. Thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of your day. Take care, everybody. Okay.